This is our planet, beautiful planet from the Russian, from, from a Russian satellite as it, uh, as it looks today, but it hasn't always looked like that. How can we possibly get to grips with our past if we don't take account of the fact that we've lost 10 million square miles of the record? The discovery of Easter Island by European explorers is a story filled with intrigue and remarkable historical details. It was the Dutch explorer Jacob Roggeveen who first came upon Easter Island on a quest for the mythic southern continent. His arrival on the island, which coincided with Easter Sunday in 1722, led to its modern name. Roggeveen, commanding a fleet of three ships, the Arend, Tienhoven and Afrikansche Gali, was the first to document the mysterious Moai statues and the island's sparse vegetation. The statues, massive and imposing, puzzled Roggeveen and his crew who wondered about the methods the islanders used to transport these colossal figures, given the apparent lack of sufficient timber or robust ropes. The name Easter Island reflects a common practice of the time, naming newly discovered lands based on significant events or days, which also expanded European maps of the Pacific and fueled further exploration and eventual colonization of these remote areas. Easter Island's discovery not only marked a major geographical milestone, but also piqued European interest in the Pacific Islands. Easter Island's extreme remoteness is one of its most fascinating aspects. Located in the southeastern Pacific Ocean, it is one of the most isolated inhabited islands on Earth. The original settlers, the Polynesians, were skilled navigators who likely arrived around 1200 CE. This isolation had a profound effect on the island's ecology and culture. Initially rich in flora, human settlement led to significant deforestation, altering the island's ecological balance. Over centuries, the isolation shaped a unique cultural evolution, marked by distinct architectural and artistic achievements, including the creation of the Moai. These statues were not merely artistic expressions, but were integral to the social and religious life on the island, embodying ancestors and serving as protectors of the communities. Moreover, the island's location made it an ideal place for astronomical observations, the Rapa Nui, like other Polynesians, were adept at celestial navigation, using the stars to guide their way across vast oceanic distances. This skill underscores the significant navigational capabilities required to reach such a remote destination and maintain a society there. A comparison that highlights the extent of Easter Island's isolation involves Tristan da Cunha in the South Atlantic Ocean. Like Easter Island, Tristan da Cunha is extremely remote located over 2,400 kilometers from the nearest continent, Africa. However, Easter Island's isolation is even more pronounced, with its closest inhabited neighbor, Pitcairn Island, over 2,000 kilometers away, and the nearest continental point in Chile nearly double that distance. This comparison not only emphasizes the vast distances involved, but also the remarkable navigational skills that allowed the Polynesians to settle and thrive on Easter Island, profoundly shaping its unique cultural and ecological development through centuries. The Moai statues of Easter Island are not only a testament to the island's rich cultural heritage, but also stand as some of the most iconic archaeological features in the world. These statues were primarily carved from volcanic tuff, a type of compressed volcanic ash sourced from Rano Raraku, a volcanic crater which doubled as a quarry. This material, though softer and easier to carve, required delicate handling to avoid damage. The native carvers used tools made from a harder type of rock, basalt, known locally as toki, to shape these magnificent figures. The diversity in size and design of the nearly 900 moai is striking. They range from modest figures about one meter tall to towering giants that reach up to 10 meters and weigh over 80 tons. Some of the unfinished statues at the quarry suggest that the moai could have reached even greater sizes with the largest estimated to be about 21 meters tall. These statues were not just isolated pieces of art, but were typically mounted on stone platforms called ahu, which lined the island's coastline. Far from mere pedestals, these ahu were sacred sites, often embedded with burial chambers for the elite, and were central to the spiritual and communal life of the Rapa Nui people. Interestingly, not all Moai face inland, while the majority do, overseeing the villages and supposedly watching over their inhabitants, some face the ocean. This orientation may have had different symbolic or practical purposes, such as marking territorial boundaries or serving as navigational aids. 
the most spiritually significant aspect of the Moai was their eyes, made from coral with either obsidian or red scoria pupils, inserted only during special ceremonies to imbue the statues with mana, a spiritual force believed to protect and benefit the community. These imposing figures represented the deified ancestors of the Rapa Nui, believed to provide spiritual strength and maintain a connection with the spirit world. More than mere representations, the Moai were considered actual embodiments of these ancestors, imbued with a potent presence. The construction and erection of these statues likely served a competitive function among the island's various tribal groups, with leaders known as Ariki, sponsoring these statues to establish and legitimize their authority and to demonstrate their ability to mobilize community resources. Moreover, the Moai played a significant role in unifying the island's population, with shared religious beliefs and communal participation in their construction and transport reinforcing social cohesion and cultural identity. It is enlightening to compare these statues to the colossal heads sculpted by the Olmec civilization in Mesoamerica. Like the Moai, the Olmec heads were massive stone sculptures representing human faces carved between 900 BCE and 400 BCE. These heads are believed to portray rulers or other significant figures, fulfilling roles of political or religious symbolism similar to those of the Moai. Despite being created by cultures separated by thousands of kilometers and many centuries, both the Moai and the Olmec heads underscore the universal use of monumental statuary to express power, authority, and religious significance across disparate human societies. This comparison highlights the remarkable ways in which different cultures have utilized monumental sculpture to convey and preserve their legacies. The Moai statues of Easter Island are not only a testament to the island's past civilizations, but also a window into the impressive capabilities and daunting challenges faced by the Rapa Nui people. These iconic statues were meticulously carved from volcanic tuff, a material sourced from the Rano Raraku quarry. Artisans used basalt stone tools to carefully outline and then gradually detach the Moai from the rock face, a painstaking process that could span months or even years depending on the statue's size. Transporting these colossal figures to their final resting places on the island's Ahu was an engineering feat that continues to fascinate historians and archaeologists today. Several theories have been proposed about how the Rapa Nui might have moved the Moai. One theory suggests the use of wooden rollers, which would have required significant deforestation. Another posits that the statues were placed on sledges that slid over logs or greased wooden tracks. However, perhaps the most captivating theory is that the statues were walked to their locations using ropes in a rocking motion, a method supported by recent experimental archaeology. These experiments have successfully demonstrated that a replica moai could be moved by a few dozen people using ropes, providing evidence that this could explain the minimal wear on the basis of transported statues and the absence of extensive drag marks. As the demand for larger and more statues grew, the environmental impact became increasingly severe. The extensive use of wood for transport methods contributed to deforestation, exacerbating soil erosion and reducing the island's capacity to build canoes, essential for fishing and transportation. This environmental strain coupled with intense social demands to build and transport these massive figures likely put considerable stress on the social fabric of the island, intensifying competition among clans and leading to conflicts and warfare. The situation worsened with the arrival of Europeans in the 18th century, who brought with them diseases to which the Rapa Nui had no immunity. This, along with the removal of some Moai by European explorers and colonists, severely impacted the island's demographic and cultural landscape. Amidst these challenges, an interesting theory emerged suggesting that the construction of the Moai was a form of ecological overreach. This theory posits that the competitive construction of ever-larger statues led to unsustainable practices, such as the over-harvesting of essential natural resources. This ecological overreach may have triggered a vicious cycle of environmental degradation, resource shortages, social upheaval, and population decline, serving as a stark reminder of the potential consequences when cultural ambitions clash with environmental limits. This narrative underscores the delicate balance between cultural achievements and ecological sustainability, a balance that, once lost, can lead to the decline of an entire civilization.